I think New Jersey probably has some of the best bagels though, right? Yeah, I'd have to give it to New Jersey, maybe even over New York, but don't tell anybody I said that. Yeah. But this is cinnamon rolls, so we don't have to talk about bagels. Hi, I'm Melissa Weller. I'm the head baker at High Street on Hudson, and I'm making cinnamon rolls with buttermilk glaze today. We're gonna start with our dough. Add milk and eggs to the mixing bowl. This is essentially really wet brioche recipe. And then the flours are whole wheat flour and all-purpose flour. About 30% whole wheat and about 60, 65% all-purpose. And I like to add the whole wheat because it adds more flavor to the dough. So we've got cardamom that goes into the dough for flavor in the dough. I just like the combination of cardamom with cinnamon together. It adds a little bit of a spicy note to it and a warmth to it that complements the cinnamon. I add all of the dry ingredients on top of the milk and the eggs. Sticky buns, cinnamon rolls are all generally made with some type of brioche dough. Brioche dough is an enriched dough, so what that means is it has added fat in it. Butter, for example, is obvious. Oil can be another fat. Eggs have fat in them, so that's an enriched dough. So it's low speed for three minutes. And the purpose of low speed is just to combine all of the ingredients together before you start kneading the dough. And we haven't added the butter yet because we want to develop the gluten before we add the butter. Butter hinders the gluten development in the dough. But you essentially just want the dough to come together before you start like turning it up. Okay, now I'm gonna turn the mixer up to high and knead the dough for about five minutes. So different types of whole wheat flour absorb moisture differently. So the flour that I'm using right now really absorbs a lot of the liquid in the dough, and that's fine. It's all gonna be great in the end and I'm gonna add the butter. It's perfect, it's nice and soft and still cool. You don't want the butter to be too soft and you don't want it to be rock hard. And we're gonna mix the butter into the dough on low speed. And if it's rock hard, you're gonna end up with little butter lumps in your dough that are never gonna go away. I usually like to keep the butter mixing in the dough somewhere between five and 10 minutes. If it takes longer than 10 minutes, which is okay, it usually means uh, the butter wasn't quite soft enough. Like sometimes you wanna scrape down the sides of the bowl part way through to make sure that it's all homogenous with the butter. This is looking pretty good. And I'm gonna scrape it down one more time. This was like about a little over five minutes and it's a little not mixed on the very bottom of the mixer bowl. So I'm gonna just use the spatula to sort of finish blending it in by hand. I went to the French Culinary Institute, which is now the International Culinary Center. I went back in 2004. I started working in kitchens in the late 90s in San Francisco. I was a chemical engineer and then I just hated my job. And so I moved to, well, I was in Pennsylvania and one day I said, I'm moving to California. And so I, I got a job in the front of the house in restaurants in San Francisco. And then it took me a few more years before I ended up moving back to the East Coast. And then I've been in New York ever since. I'm just gonna cover this with, you can use a kitchen towel or a plastic wrap. Either it doesn't really matter. It's gonna sit at room temperature for two hours. While the dough is resting, we're gonna make the filling. It's dark brown sugar, butter, cinnamon, and then it's a pinch of sea salt. So I love salt in everything. Just mix on low speed. The important part about the filling is not to add any air into the filling when you're mixing it. So just keep it on low speed. You could totally use light brown sugar. You could change the spices. It doesn't have to be cinnamon. You could put more cardamom. You could do black pepper. You could add some orange zest. Anything like that to spice it up. But the key is the ratio of the sugar and the butter. Keep that the same. What I like about brown sugar is that it has molasses in it. It's more melty and oozy, and you could potentially substitute with white sugar. It wouldn't have the same gooey effect. The other key about this is keep it at room temperature. So you can make it ahead of time, but don't let this get cold or else you're not gonna be able to spread it on the dough. So the dough's been sitting out for two hours, and now we're going to pat it out onto our sheet tray. If I start touching it with my fingers, it's gonna stick to them. So I wet my fingers with a little bit of water and then that makes it really nice and easy to pat out. This is sort of like a nice little pre-shaping so that when we roll it out, you end up with like a more even rectangle. So now this is gonna go in the refrigerator.
The dough's been chilling for two hours, so we're gonna take it out of the refrigerator so that we can roll it out. When you have a wet dough like this, once it's chilled, it's really firm. So you could pretty much take it off of the sheet tray and peel the paper off. It doesn't stick to your fingers. And then you're gonna put a little flour down on the bottom and then also on the top. We're gonna roll it out to 12 inches this way and 16 inches this way. And I like to sort of move it around often so it doesn't stick to the bottom. This is 12 and this is 16, so I'm gonna spread the filling on it right now. Because it's cold out today, this is a little more firm. It's a little more tricky spread. So we're just gonna go a little slow on it. I'm gonna stop and start to roll this up. And I'm gonna just gently roll it into a log. There we go. Once you get it going, you can just sort of push it along. Great, this is our log. So now I'm gonna just, I just pick it up. Make sure you sort of like get underneath of it and then move it onto the sheet pan. And I like to chill it down before I slice it because it makes the slices a little bit more neat and even. So I'm gonna put this back in the refrigerator for a little bit. This was chilled down, and now we're gonna cut it into two inch slices. So you want eight pieces. So I'm just gonna eyeball halfway down the middle. I usually put the nice side up. The cinnamon rolls are gonna proof for an hour and a half at room temperature or somewhere warm with a little bit of a towel or they can go in the refrigerator and I can bake them the next morning, which is my preference because then I don't have to do any work. I just wake up the next morning and pop them in the oven. Okay, now the cinnamon rolls are ready to go into the oven. Um, the oven's at 350 degrees and they bake for 45 to 50 minutes until they're nice and beautiful golden brown. So we're gonna let these cool down, and while they're cooling down, we're gonna prepare the buttermilk glaze. It's just confectioner's sugar, buttermilk, and salt. Salt's the magic ingredient. You wanna whisk it together. If it's lumpy, you can, you can pass the confectioner's sugar through like a sifter. Sometimes when it's lumpy, I try to whisk out the lumps. Sometimes I'll do this, like, let it rest for a couple of minutes, like two or three minutes, and then whisk again, and the lumps go away. Let that sit for a second, and then we're gonna unmold. Just cool down quickly. Oh, that's nice. Okay, so now I'm gonna take the glaze and spoon it over the cinnamon rolls. Don't want to let any of the glaze go to waste. You have to use it all. So it's ready to eat, right? Oh, oh, this is perfect. Oh wow, there's like oozy buttermilk glaze down here. Okay, it's pretty awesome. It's really good. I like how the glaze and the filling make it sort of oozy. It's the center part with the filling that's like oozy. It's like the moist part of it. It's the center part. It's the best part. For the recipe, click the link below.